Hey guys, how are you? I want to welcome you in. Today, I'm going to be talking about and discussing defensive driving. If you don't know, I'm a state certified driving instructor. I teach teens and adults. And today, we're going to be talking about defensive driving. Every driver should develop a proactive defensive driving approach to avoid conflicts. A conflict can be you bumping into someone, backing into someone, a potential a side swipe or an accident. The PDA method is one of the primary tools for proactive driving to avoid potential hazards. It allows the driver to get the big picture. When you're driving, you must get the big picture. The big picture allows you to go a little bit slower. The big picture allows you to go a little bit faster. The big picture helps you become a successful driver. You're here today to learn how to drive and be a safe driver. I'm going to give you some strategies and techniques to help you become your best authentic self. If you have questions, you type them in. I'm going to answer it and let's get it going. Avoid risk. Risk is the chance of death, injury, or damage, or loss of life. The primary goal of driving <clears throat> excuse me, every day is to be safe, is to be successful. You want to be safe out there on the road. You want to model good driving behavior for your little brother or sister. Hello, user. How are you doing? You want to be safe and show your brother or sister or your mom or dad, hey, I'm a responsible driver. I can drive to meet the goals. I can make you happy. And in return, you're going to trust me with the vehicle. And if you trust someone, you're more likely to say yes. A proactive driver also adjusts their visual aids. You have three mirrors. You have a center mirror, <clears throat> you have a driver's side mirror, and you have a right side mirror. Adjust those mirrors so you can see and you can learn everything out there that you're going to encounter on the road. It takes some time to become a consistent, safe driver. Be patient. Next, in urban driving environments, the driver's visual search needs to go into a circular pattern, left, middle, and right. Once you understand that visual search pattern, you're more likely to be super successful, more likely to be safe, and you're more likely to understand about being out there on the road. We're here answering questions. If you have questions, put them in. We're talking about how to be a safe driver, <clears throat> how to be a defensive driver, and how to reach your goals of getting your full license. I'm a state certified driving instructor. I teach teens and adults. I'm here to help all of you reach your goal. So if you have those questions, put them in. We're talking about have to look further ahead. You have to be able to see what is going on. And if you see what's going on, you can make safe decisions. Passengers can be very distracting by nature. This is why many of the new graduated license laws limit the number of videos and training. When you're in the car with your friends, your buddies, your homies, your girls, you're more likely to be distracted. So you want to take your time, be patient, and increase your awareness. When you're with your peers, you tend to show off. Don't show off. Be your best authentic self. Be safe out there on the road. If you have questions, type them in. If you want to share this, feel free to do so. <clears throat> and if you want to come on, let me know. Send me an invite. Proactive drivers always operate the vehicle in a mental mindset, a sharp mindset. It's like all of us stay up late one night and late a second night, and then we have to drive. You're tired, you're slow, you're sluggish. What I need all of you to do is get a good night's rest. I want to encourage all of you to share this live and invite more of your friends in so you can get some good responses to the questions that all of you have. If a driver is feeling extremely fatigued, they should immediately look for a place to rest. You don't want to have to drive a long way when you're really tired. You want to take your time, 
you want to be safe, and you want to make good decisions. Low traffic environments. I'm going to be talking about low traffic environments. This will help you understand what's going on, and I want to create a good learning community. Hello, Alexis. Hello, Your Royal Highness. Hello, Maddie. I want to welcome all of you in. Low traffic driving environments. This is a residential area. You're driving in your neighborhood, but neighborhoods are the most dangerous place. Why? You have little kids. You have people who aren't paying attention. You have to drive slower. You have to take your time, and you need to be patient. Children especially are running in the roadway. Pedestrians entering the roadway for a child or a pet. You want to cover your brake. You want to look ahead to the left, look ahead to the right, and watch for cars that are coming out, backing out. They may not see you at all. A vehicle unexpectedly backs out of the driveway. You want to cover the brake. You may have to tap the horn. Dun, 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 dun. If you tap that horn, you're going to give people time to react. Next, an object like a ball entering the roadway. You as a young defensive driver need to take your time and need to be prepared when you're out there on the road because you always have to expect the unexpected. We're talking about defensive driving if you just popped in. I want you to put your questions in. I want you to share this with your friends and tell them, hey, we're out here discussing uh, how to become a safe driver. Next, residential driving environments, mainly you have control stop signs. This is the stop sign at the end of your neighborhood. You want to come to a complete stop, S-T-O-P. You want to stop for a minimum of three seconds, 1,001, 1,002, and 1,003. After you stop, you want to look left, right, and left. And once you look left, right, and left, you'll be able to determine the best path of travel. This is very important in residential areas due to the limited space and high proximity of vehicles, meaning there are trucks coming down your street, there are kids riding their bikes, there are school buses, there's mom and dad who brought dinner home and you're excited. Hello, Star. Hello, Isaac. How are you doing? I'm going to continue. Drivers have to be very alert of vehicles going down the street. You want to pay attention. You want to be aware. And you have to make good decisions. If parked on the side of the road in a residential area, the vehicle should never block a fire hydrant. What I need you to do is remember, don't park by a fire hydrant. Leave room just in case they are trying to get there to put out a fire. I want to talk about rural driving. Urban is in the city, rural is in the country. If you have questions, type them in. Rural driving can be very dangerous due to the high speeds and unexpected hazards that can occur on the road. Rural driving consists of curves, hit roadway. Vehicles unexpectedly come onto the roadway. It could be a tractor. It could be a truck. You have to have that defensive driving mindset in your brain to be safe. Poor road conditions can cause a vehicle to lose traction. So you want to be safe. Hello, Faith. How are you? Hello, Joss. How are you? The lack of ability to properly scan can be one of the challenges for a beginning driver. So what I need all of you to do is look ahead as far as you can, scan and identify what you see so you can make a better decision. Curves, hills, narrow roadways are a common rural road situation. They can be very dangerous to all types of road users, especially new road users. Rural driving environments may be very open, but yet they have limited visibility. What that means is you have a long, narrow road, but you have trees on the left, you have trees on the right. So what you need to do is drive a little bit slower, make sure you can see, and stay consistent. I need you to stay consistent to be prepared for different type of driving environments. High traffic driving environments. 
we're talking about downtown areas. This could be downtown Chicago. This could be Houston, Texas. This could be L.A. Pedestrians always appear in unexpected areas. This could be between cars. This could be in a parking area. This could be in a heavy downtown area. Let's say the Lakers are playing and LeBron is burning it up, shooting threes. You want to get a good spot, but people are there. What I need you to do is be safe. Bye. Thank you.